Right, so uh, unified chemistry. Um, after the last two epic papers, this one's only an hour and 30 minutes, so nice and quick in comparison. Right, so, um, want some chemical explanations for the following statements. Now, it's really important to get through these nice and quick. Uh, don't spend too long dilly-dallying, um, but make sure that you use the correct chemical terminology to get you the mark. You notice that these are one markers, so get in there, get the answer down, move on as quickly as you can. So first one, bromine has a higher boiling point than chlorine. Okay, this is AS chemistry. Bromine, well, both uh, bromine and chlorine, the um, interactions between molecules will be London forces. The strength of London forces depends on the number of electrons that you have in a molecule. Bromine obviously has more electrons than chlorine and therefore has stronger, land, stronger London forces and therefore a higher boiling point. Okay, a carton of milk expands on freezing. This, because, this is because um, obviously milk contains water um, and when, milk, when water freezes, uh, hydrogen bonds form between the molecules um, uh, when it forms ice uh, to give you a very open structure and the water molecules uh, become further apart. Potassium is placed immediately after argon in the code table. Uh, nice and easy, potassium is one more proton than argon, that's why. Uh, the reaction of ethene with chlorine under UV radiation is a poor method for pretend, preparing a high yield of chloroethane. This is because, as you know, um, in free radical substitution reactions, you can get multiple products. You can get a multiple substitution occurring. Um, so you could have dichloroethane, um, produce trichloroethane. It's very difficult to control. Water has a concentration of approximately 56 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, so this is perhaps one where we need to do a little bit of work on the board. So, water, of course, has a density of one gram per decimeter cubed. So, uh, one gram per centimeter cubed, rather. So, the uh, density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed. So therefore, one decimeter cube contains 100 centimeters cubed, so it will have 100 grams in one decimeter. So 1,000 grams in one decimeter cube. Um, therefore, to find the concentration in moles per decimeter cube, divide by the molar mass of water, which is 18, and 1,000 divided by 18 gives you 56. The carbon-carbon bonds in benzene are all the same length, that's because the pi bonds in benzene are delocalized across the six carbon-carbon bonds. Right, IR spectroscopy distinguishes from ket distinguishes ketones from carboxylic acid. Uh, well, that's because um, in a carboxylic acid, you also have the OH, very, very broad absorption between 2,500 wave numbers to 3,300 wave numbers which you do not see for ketones. Uh, 1.323 grams of uh, N2O has a volume of one decimeter cube. Okay, so for this one, you need to use your ideal gas equation. N equals PV over RT. The pressure is 100,000 pascals. The volume is one times 10 to the minus three meters cubed. R is 8.31, the temperature they've given you has been 400. You bang that calculation in and you get 0 0.0301 mole. Um, and then you need to times that number by the molar mass of N2O, which is uh, 44. So times by 44, and that gives you the answer of 1.0. 323 grams. Uh, okay, 4.25 grams of um, C6H5COOCH3 has uh, 1.88 times 10 to the 22 molecules. Okay, so the MR of that boy is 136. So you find the number of moles of the mass divided by molar mass. That comes to, uh, uh, oh, and then, hang on now, then you times that 
by Avogadro's number uh, times 10 to the 23 to give you uh, that answer there. The rate of hydrolysis of one bromopinutane is faster than one chlorobutane. That's because the carbon bromine bond, which is uh, the one that gets broken, broken, is longer and much weaker than the carbon chlorine bond. So the carbon bromine bond is weaker and longer than the carbon chlorine bond. Uh, right, so question 2a, this is uh, one that really, uh, if you know your notes, it is easy peasy lemon squeezing. Uh, because all you're doing is running through all the tests for your cations and anions. So let's deal with cations first. Uh, for all three of those, you can use sodium hydroxide solution. Um, for Fe2+, you would see a green precipitate. For Mn2+, you would see a pinky precipitate. And for the ammonium ion, you warm, um, warm it uh, with sodium hydroxide. You test the gas produced with um, litmus paper and the lit with red litmus paper, and the red litmus paper will turn blue because ammonia gas is produced. Um, the equations are pretty straightforward. Um, so, for example, uh, for the iron, it's just going to be Fe2 plus aqueous plus 2OH minus aqueous give you FeOH2 solid. For the ammonium one, slightly more difficult, NH4 plus plus OH minus gives you NH3 plus H2O. And of course it's the ammonia which turns your litmus paper blue. Um, okay, uh, for the anions test, uh, the chloride ion, you should know this by now. Chloride, you use silver nitrate and you will see a white precipitate which will dissolve in a dilute ammonia solution. Carbonate ion, a carbonate ion will react with an acid so you can use nitric acid and it will fizz um, and that will identify your carbonate ion um, and your sulfate ion. Um, you will uh, add barium nitrate uh, solution and you will see a white precipitate. Um, for your equations for this one, um, you've got Ag plus aqueous plus, oh no, sorry, uh, yeah, plus Cl minus aqueous. Uh, crazy board again. Uh, going to give me uh, silver chloride solid. Uh, for sulfate, that is also a precipitation reaction. Ba2 plus aqueous plus um, uh, SO4 to minus aqueous gives you barium sulfate solid. And finally, the carbonate ion um, is really uh, much easier just to do these as ionic equations um, uh, plus H plus gives you CO2 plus H2O and you need two of those like so. Okay so the next one it wants us to work out um, the pH of water at 37 degrees C. Remember, um, water, uh, the pH of water varies depending on the temperature. And this shows how KW K varies. So you find 37 degrees C on the graph, go across, and you will find that your value is um, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so that's KW. Kw, you know, is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. Water is neutral, so these two are the same. So we can say 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to the concentration of H plus squared, and therefore the concentration of H plus 
you just square root that and that comes to 1.55 times 10 to the 7. Then you need to find that in your pH equation. And if you do that, so uh, you've got pH equals minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of H plus ion. You find the log of that number um, and change the sign and you will find out the pH is 6.81. Right, a nice easy one. Uh, you're just finding the empirical formula. So put your percentages up, you divide by the uh, relative atomic mass of H1. You end up with this being 0.373, 2.24, 6.81. And 1.12, divide by the small, the smallest one, which is that, 1 uh, to 6 to 18 to 3. So your empirical formula is CONN6H18Cl3. Okay, so notice we now need to work that into formula. What is n going to be? Well, n, the number of CLs, is 3. So, um, how can we change N6HAT? If you notice, that is in a 1 to 3 ratio. So, CONH36, like so. And the charge must be 3 plus, because you've got 3 chloride ions um, as a counter ion. 